Hey there, Grant Sinzani here, and it really is a plum pleasing pleasure to have you here. And uh, maybe it's morning, maybe it's afternoon, maybe it's evening, wherever you're at. Regardless, really glad to have you here, and really glad to unfolding this specific short course. Um, this is going to be a, at least about 30 minutes or so. This is usually given in a whole day uh, with the team and myself, but just for you, just for you, in the next 20 minutes or so, we will just break down to you how exactly you write a book and more than that, how you market this book and then obviously give it towards the world as well, which I think is imperative for you to also hold on to and keep in the forefront of your mind. Just a brief background about who I am. The name is Grant Sanzani. I own a company called the Golden Goose Institute, a publishing company. Uh, thus far, I've published three books of my own and I've done at least 10 of other individuals this year, we've also got a rollout for quite a few. So if you're looking for somebody to also mentor you through this process, I'll definitely leave my email address below uh, for your sake as well. Uh, and the reason why I made this specific video, the interesting story behind this is that I was actually at a conference earlier on presenting this exact same material. And I thought that the material had been recorded and it wasn't. So I decided that I just need to get back on make sure that I give this material to those people that obviously had, had attended the, the actual conference. And then there's you. There's you that I want to share this with because I believe that you have a story deep inside you that the world could learn and glean off of. So that being said, let's jump into why people don't become authors. Let's begin to start demystifying these myths that we normally give ourselves around what it takes to become an author and why people don't become authors as well. So the reason why people don't become authors is three specific reasons. Number one, people complain that it's hard to do. It's very hard to do, some would say. How do you put your pen down onto a piece of paper consistently over a period of time and finally take that and put it into a book format? How do you do that? How do you do that? And I've got a question to ask for you that will maybe enable you to think a bit further in this regard. When was the first time you ever did anything right, correctly, when you tried? When was that time for you? And, and, I, and I'll wait, I'll wait, I'll wait. And I'm talking about things that are post beginner's luck. Babies take a while to walk. When it came to riding a bicycle, that took some time as well. And it's the same thing here when it comes down to putting your thoughts to paper and publishing it through a book to bless the world with. It is going to be hard at the beginning, but that doesn't excuse you in not sharing that story that could move the world. So I challenge you to accept that at the beginning of every journey, you will be a novice, but with time and consistent determination and endurance, eventually what started out as hard will end up being easy. I can say that the same about becoming an author. I've done it three times, working on my fourth book as I speak, and I can tell you now from experience that it gets easier along the way. In fact, you get to a point where you're like, I've got so much to share, and I kind of feel like there's so little time, and that will be you one of these days. That being said, some other people say that, hey, Grant, I, maybe it's not that hard for me. I, I think I can, I can grasp onto it. I think I can understand what's going on, but I think it's really expensive. There's a lot of money that I need to put in in order for me to get this book out. And I'm not too sure what will happen once it's, you know, once, once it's been put out. And the message that I have for you is that based on the doors that I've entered, based on the opportunities that have come alive because of my first book. And I just want to show you that first book in your presence. It was when the golden goose um, doesn't lay eggs, lessons on fulfilling your potential. This was in 2017. And I can tell you now, when I look back, I tend to ask myself, what were you thinking? <laughs> because the material isn't, isn't, isn't as, isn't as immersed as I would want it to be. But then I realized that I've also grown with time. Now, because of this book, I was able to obviously establish a publishing company. And when I look at what this book has cost me from an expense point of view versus what I've gained, over its lifetime with the other two books that I've also put into the world, it's expensive not to do. It's expensive not to do. Put that story out there and you'll see for yourself the opportunities that you'll get because of the work that you're putting out there. The next thing is self-belief. 
people out there don't necessarily believe in themselves. And there's two things that I want you to consider when we talk about self-belief. The first one is fear. We all fear something. And fear in and of itself is fine. But when we begin to entertain it for far longer than we should, then there is a problem. And allow me to expagorate on this a bit more. You see, when you're fearful, what you're fearful of is basically what people will presume of you. This thing called imposter syndrome begins to emanate, come to the surface, and you begin to experience that. And I want to tell you this, that at the end of the day, people that you think will actually care, don't. They really don't. Everybody really is minding their own business at the end of the day. Now, given you might put something out there that might have a bit of mistakes here and there, but I can tell you from experience that I did exactly the same thing. And all we can promise each other at the end of the day is that I'm just going to go forward. I do accept and acknowledge the fear because they're not running away from it. I do accept and acknowledge the fear. I do accept the fact that I do care what other people think of me, but I also understand that that changes with time. And once I put my material out there, chances are, their ideas, their philosophies will change with mine as well. And if they don't, perhaps maybe what it is that I have to give is not for them. It's perhaps it's for somebody else. Let's keep that in mind. That's fear. The next one is doubt. And doubt is now about you and your capabilities. Do I have what it takes? Am I an expert? Can I truly share my story with people that are out there? And I'm telling you, yes, 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 you can. Now, you might say, Grant, but I'm not an expert yet. And, and, and that's the truth. You're not yet. You're not yet. There's still time for you to garner this expertise and so forth. And remember the reason or how someone becomes an expert is by electing themselves. It is not a mere case of bravado or ego that you lead with. No, no. Instead, it is you saying deep down inside that I think that I can help somebody and I'm going to go ahead and do it. So fear and doubt, you want to feel those feelings, but in the same breath, you also want to understand the following, that you are in control. That when it comes to fear, things are going to change, and that's fine. You will change with them. When it comes down to doubt, it's a matter of saying, hey, I'm not an expert yet, but I will become one. I have elected myself, and that's going to come with time, and I will be patient with myself. That being said, let's move on to the next thought around how do we create a book of congruence? Now, I know for a fact, and you can definitely put in the comments below, that there's a book that you, you have read and it has changed your life drastically. And, and you can actually go back and say, before I read this book, my life was not what it is now. And I've got several of those. Um, there's The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. There's Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki. There's um, Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich. Those books have really added a different perspective towards my life. And what you realize about all of these really, really good books is that they were able to develop one idea succinctly to the point, to the point that I was able to lash on to whatever it is that they wanted to share. But we also on the same token, we've read books that we've kind of looked at and said, what was that book about? And maybe we finished them. <laughs> and maybe sometimes we haven't. But there have been those books that we realized that this was not it. And basically, with those specific authors, I can say this much. They probably did not share their story as much as they should have. And maybe they didn't share it in a way that would have made the listener better off. But you're going to be different because we're going to introduce to you what we call the golden thread. And what the golden thread is, is basically how you will take your idea your inspiration, your desire, whatever it is that you want to teach the person that's going to read your book so that when they're done reading it from cover to cover, they, they, they just look at it and say, this is the book that I've been waiting for. And you have the power to do that. But the first question that you're going to have to ask yourself and answer is, what's your if? What's your if? Or rather, what is your what if? <laughs> what's your what if? Now, what does this mean? When I created this specific book, which is my first book, my what if was people have to potential. What if they had the tools to actualize it time and time over? With the book that I wrote on how to write a book, self-published within a year, the same thing. What if people had the tools to publish a book within a year? 
with my third book, it was around how to sell. What if entrepreneurs, first time business owners had the tools to grow their businesses and they learned this through selling? Those are my what ifs. And basically your what ifs is what makes the world a better place to live in. Every single book has to have a what if, and that needs to be clearly articulated. So what I would ask you to do is clearly articulate what your what if is. Then from there, I want you to look at what is the problem that your book is going to solve. So your what if is an ideal world that your book will create once your reader has gone through it. The problem that you are going to be solving is now you articulating what the world is currently. Now, the question that then follows the after is, what are the causes of that problem? Why are we in the quagmire that we're in? Why aren't we where we need to be? And you need to put down those causes. I challenge individuals to always put down about 10. And the team that I have also, we sit down and are like, guys, you've got to absolutely make sure that you at least have 10. Then after you put down those 10 causes to those problems, you now need to sit down and go, great, what are the solutions to every one of those problems? And something magical is going to happen here. Those causes, those 10 causes, once you put those 10 solutions and attach it to those um, causes, you then have your chapters and then you have your messages within your chapters as well. And I've seen how this works time and time and time again. Something that you could definitely begin to deliberate on. Now, that being said, guys, once you're done with this specific process, and what I've, what I've done is that down in the link, there's a MailChimp link. Um, I will ask for your email address so we can also keep a conversation alive. I'll send a message to you every Wednesday or every second Wednesday. Just, you know, it's called Writer's Wednesday, just to make sure that we keep a conversation going. But on the back of that, once you give me your email address, I will send you what I call the author's matrix, which is basically a step-to-step -step guide on how to write your book. All of these questions that I ask here are cleverly articulated in that and that will flesh out your idea in such a manner where you will be able to have a congruent message and your reader will certainly be very thankful for the effort that you put into your book but that being said let's shift focus to goal setting you've got to have a time when you're going to start this and you've got to have a time when you're going to end as well and both of those have to be articulated. So I've got a question for you. What's your end date? When do you know for a fact that your book is going to get published? Have you set that date yet? Because if you haven't, I can tell you this much. That you will consistently be in a place where you are always somehow writing your book. One day it will happen. One day. But we all know the same. One day is one day. Which typically means that eventually nothing ever gets happened. Or eventually that nothing ever really happens. So we all know that one person that every year they say, this is going to be my year. You just, just wait and watch. You just wait and watch. This is my year. Things are going to happen. And when you give that person, say, a max of that year... December the 31st, what do they then tell us? This wasn't my year, but next year, <laughs> next year, next year, next year, see me, watch me, watch me, watch me. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. I'm going to get it done. And what ends up happening is that this person repeats themselves time and time and time and time and time again. And essentially what happens with us who are watching is that we hear the same chorus, but this person never arrives to their stanzas. And I'm looking at you right now. And I'm saying that do not sing the same chorus and never arrive to your stanzas. Do not be that person we are talking about right now. Set a goal. Ensure by all means that you know when your end date is. And then what I want you to also do is latch onto the following acronym, FAST. The F is frequently discussed. Have a group of people that you sit down with and you discuss that goal with consistently, an accountability group, a mastermind. Ensure you have that in place. The second is A, ambition. Make sure that you've got some ambitious goal attached to it. The point of goals is to fail. I know nobody ever says that, but it's the truth. 
Because as you begin to fail, on the other side, you realize that success is lying and waiting for you. In actuality, I believe that failure is actually a virtue in and of itself, provided we're willing to consistently learn from our failure and then progress. But if we just fail and never learn and we, you know, cower away from what we could have succumb, then failure obviously becomes the full stop. When in actuality, it's meant to be a comma. Keep going. Keep going. That's the A. The S is for specific. Make sure that your date is specific. Give us a, a day. Give us a time. And give us a place as to where we're going to buy your book as well. And and please email that to me. Gsanzani at the Golden Goose Institute dot com. I will buy a copy of your book, provided you're going to sign it for me. I hope that you're going to do that. Right. So that's goal setting for you. And then the last is T, which is being transparent. And that's you just looking at your goal and making sure that every time you reach a, a market that you're meant to, you acknowledge yourself. Every time you don't, you obviously begin to learn from it. That's fast, not smart, fast. We move smart now. We don't, we remove smart, I mean to say, and we focus on fast. That's goal setting for you. So email me and let me know when that date is for you. And if you need help with more tips and tricks around this, I've got some good things in my pocket that will obviously propel you further along your journey. The next is doing the research. Guys, do the research around your book. It's absolutely essential that you do so. And there are a couple of things that you want to ensure that you do research on. The first is one, are there Facebook groups that I could join? Are there Amazon books that I could probably look at? Encyclopedias? Googling material, mentors, experts in the field. Find out who else is thinking what you're thinking. Find out. And then use that towards your favor. Because it's one thing when you think what you're thinking, and we're all going to call it bi being biased. Of course you think what you're thinking. You're you. But who else is thinking what you're thinking? And this is when you begin to get research underway. But research in and of itself is not about drowning your voice. Your voice leads and the research thereafter follows. And I want you to remember that and keep that in mind as you begin to journey forward. Research. Go ahead and do the research. The next thing that I want to discuss with you guys would be creating a business out of your, out of your book. Now, this is the statement that I want you to latch on to and, and just you know hold on to and never, ever give we make money not from our book but because of our book and there's a difference in that regard right now these these books collectively will cost i know that i'm talking about you know talking to an audience that's all over the world but these books collectively will probably cost you a thousand rand right if my target at the end of the month is say about 50 to 60,000 Rand. It means that I basically have to sell these books 60 times altogether. Alternatively, because my books do solve a problem, one on potential, I can look at, hey, is there a life course that I can put together or coaching courses that I can put together that will allow me to exponentially grow my revenue? Maybe. Or perhaps there's a, there's a selling course or workshop that I could have or some speaking engagements that I could go on to about sales that could probably help me. The other is maybe there's a workshop that I could have around creating books and maybe I could run a publishing company, which is what I do right now. And that means that now I'm creating a business out of my book and therefore I'm getting paid because of my book, because of the authority that it puts me in as opposed to from my book. And I want you to keep that in mind. So the question I have for you is out of the problems that you're going to be solving, what products and services could you create? And I promise you that you can. Now, you might say, but Grant, this is my first time doing this. I'm not so confident. And that's fine. Thanks for admitting it. Thanks for being honest. It doesn't mean that you can't. Search deep within yourself and share with the world that which it needs. Because once I've read your book and if I resonate with your material, the next thing that I'm going to ask myself is great. What's next? And I need you to be responsible enough with my life to have that next prepared for me. Okay. Promise me that you're going to make that product and service a 
and ensure that it's there for me when I'm done with your book. Creating a business from your book because we not make money from our book. We make money because of our book. The next is creating a marketing plan because basically getting noticed is your focus. If you are not, if you are not marketing your book on a regular basis, what essentially will end up happening is that you become somebody that nobody knows. Now, remember that your book is the entry point and therefore sending it to as many people and as many um, the clients as possible will allow you to, to start getting into a space where people begin to notice you. Get noticed. Get noticed. And there are nine questions that I want you to engage in as you begin to do so. And I got this from the one page marketing plan by a man called Alan Dibb, an, a, a phenomenal book that I would recommend that you certainly read. And the marketing plan goes as for, follows. We, we answer nine specific questions. Nine specific questions at the different journey point of your prospect, which will obviously turn into a client. Now allow me to expagorate on this just a tad more. The people that we meet up with range in three. Prospect, which is before any interest. A lead, now they're interested. They've got, they're starting a conversation with us. And a client, once they've obviously paid, what's the next step forward? So within a prospect, there are three questions that we need to ask to find our prospects. Number one, what's my target market? Now, if you're an expert in your field, your target market is whoever you've been dealing with. However, if you are a novice to your field, then guess what? Your target market is anybody that's willing to buy your book. And as they begin to read your book, your target market will appear towards you. Now, someone might say, Grant, that is risque. I'm kind of entering this field with, you know, my eyes closed. Of course you are. You're a novice. Accept it. And as you accept it, the doors will then begin to open because your customer base will lead you. There's a, a lovely lady that I met who became um, a client from buying my book and then was the first one that I actually had published as well. Um, joined my, my, in this case, she joined my author coaching. And then from the author coaching, she obviously published a book as well. You know, that individual, um, Leander Teller, her name, she led me to where I was supposed to go. And I can tell you now that your client will lead you to where you're supposed to go, especially if you're a novice. Your clients will lead you. I promise you that much. The second question that we need to ask ourselves is, what is my message to my target market? And this is you now going back to your golden thread, right? So I hope that you've given me your email address because I would have sent it to you by now. The author matrix will allow you to get that marketing message underway, right? That what if, because that's what you're going to be communicating towards your target market. There's a current client that I'm working with right now where we've actually looked into different messages for different types of markets for her book. And I'm just astonished to, to see where that's going to lead her in this regard, right? The, the last one is the media that you'll choose to obviously reach people with. Now, media, there's so much media around, guys. So, so much media. Um, your Facebooks, which is something that I'm acquainted with, YouTube, you have so many social media platforms. The question that you need to ask yourself is, which one am I going to go with? And I would say a maximum of three, a maximum of three. What you want to lead with, because what social media really is, is this loud, um, it's almost like a speaker or a microphone. That's what social media is. But you've got to have a message and your message has to be based on your product or service. So make sure that you've got your service and product first before engaging on social media platforms. The next is lead. So now this person is happy with what they're hearing from the marketplace. And so now they, they want to engage you further. How are you going to capture them? Is it going to be through Excel? Is it going to be through an email marketing system? Is it going to be through a sales system? How are you going to capture them? What's, what's your customer relationship management system? What is that going to be? Because if you don't have a database of how you're collecting your names, then how are you going to follow up on them, right? Then the second thing is your lead nurturing system. Now, some people are going to buy from you right now. Others are going to wait a bit, and then some obviously will not even be interested, right? The first group, everybody focuses on because it's quick and immediate funds. The second group, people don't have the patience with most of the time. But out of 100%, 67% of your next coming sales will come from that specific group. And 67% is a lot, a lot of money. So I would say, what's your lead nurturing system? How are you going to nurture these individuals? So if they're interested in your book, is there some content that they consistently can read? 
Are the YouTube videos that you're going to put out on a consistent basis, are you going to be mailing them on a consistent basis? You decide, but make sure by all means that you have something to nurture them because you want that conversation to keep on going. You want that conversation to keep on going. The last is what's my sales strategy? So somebody's interested and they want to buy. How am I going to convert that? You must be intentional about that upfront. Now, some people might say, ah, oh, but you know, I'm a bit, I, I'm, I'm uncomfortable to do that. Guys, money is in exchange for work that is work that is that is well done or work that will be well done. It is a fair exchange. I give you my money so that I can bet off myself. And remember, the salesperson is usually the person that's worse off in that exchange. Because once you give me the money and you take either my book or any of my courses, you take that for life and you can use that and manipulate that accordingly. Whereas in my mind, when I get that money, that's for here and now. Yes, I might save it and put it on the side, but that's where it stops. You can consistently manipulate whatever it is that I've given you to better your life. Napoleon Hill passed on years ago. His book, on average, maybe two to 300 rand where I'm from, South Africa. But based on the ideas that it makes me have and allows me to you know, pursue, what's 300 rand? Make sense? So have that sales conversion strategy underway so that you can have that fair exchange between yourself and interested parties as well. For me, it's a Yoko device or a very good invoicing system as well. Those have worked miracles in my stead. And I charge you to obviously get that as well. Lastly, once they become a client, how will you deliver a world-class experience consistently? Consistently. Consistently. Michael Jackson, I believe, who was one of the best entertainers in the world. You'd be in a stadium with people packed to the rafters. And he would hold his hat and people would go crazy. He would put on that glove of his, people would go crazy. He would just shift to the side and people would go crazy. And as soon as he sung, people were fainting. That world-class experience. How are you going to create that for your client? For me, it was as simple as making sure that whenever I gave a book, it came either signed or it came, you know, with, with, with a nice package around it. That was me. What are you going to do to make that world-class experience? It's important. It's imperative. The second is how will you increase your customer lifetime value? And that's obviously of building a business. Because once they buy the book, the question is, what's next? Is it coaching? Is it a workshop? Is it a keynote presentation? What's next? Have those next in place. So what may, might have cost you 200 Rand, where I'm from, 200 to 300 Rand. Next thing is 5,000 Rand. And it could be ten to twenty thousand rand, and you just keep going up that specific ladder. You know, it allows you to also fund your dream so that you can share more with others. And I think that's imperative. The last one then would be how to orchestrate and stimulate referrals. Great, this person has bought from you, but who in that circle would more or less want exactly the same thing? Because I'm, I can assure you, chances are they will. And guys, basically, this is this is it. This is the small presentation I had for you in less than thirty minutes. Um, just around how to develop a book. Now, in and of itself, remember, this is something that we do for a full-on day. So what I'm going to do is three things. One, one, I'm going to put a link for an emailing address, right? Where I'm going to collect your email address, and in exchange, I'll obviously give you a author matrix. And with that author matrix, what you will essentially do with that is be able to use it for your book, right? and begin to start being able to get your content in a place where it's very succinct. The second thing that I want to do for you is that I'm gonna give you a link to our Quicket page so that you can see the new developments in that regard. So if you are looking to say, Grant, I would love to attend one of your workshops, whether online or offline being face-to-face, -face, you are in the loop in that regard. And we've got ones that are playing out this full on year. The day I record this is in 2021. Um, if this is 2022 or 2023, when you get this, chances are we're still alive. We're still doing pretty well. Um, come and join us on our journey. And, and also have a look at our website, www.thegoldengooseinstitute.com. Um, and, and that's basically what I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for obviously being part and parcel of, of this journey. Um, all I have to say with you going forward is definitely let's 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 keep in touch. Let's keep in touch. Um, and and the last bit is that please do share your story because the world does need to hear your story and learn from your truth.
It's Grant Zanzani saying, I believe in you and what you have to share with the world. So share it.